Well, a recent study from Swansea University estimated that over 5,000 Britons converted to Islam last year, and most of them are white women with an average age of 27. Why? Uh, is Islam a better guide for life? Well, let's, uh, let's, let's talk to uh, Mariam and Susan. Uh, uh, mother and daughter, good morning to you both. Good morning. Good morning. Thank you for coming in. You, you both converted, but, but separately. Yeah. Uh, what, what is, how has it transformed your life, Mariam? It's, it gives it structure, and it, it has, it's an ex explanation for why we're here and what we're meant to be doing, where we've come from, and what's going to happen when we die. And you know what you're doing on Earth, and uh, you know what God wants you to do. It's very clear. Yes. It's, it's almost a, you're given, it's a, it's a random and chaotic and confusing world. I think we can all appreciate that, but it gives you a structure and a certainty. In a sense? I suppose, yes. I think um, the one thing that uh, I would agree with is that um, it's, it's, it's black and, and, and white. It's, it's clear that there's no grey area. You, you don't get confused. It's all or nothing as well, isn't it? No, not necessarily. I mean, I suppose that's a, a grey area. But um, people think that you, you, you do something, and if you don't do that, then you have. You're, you're sinning. If you're not praying, then you're, you're not a Muslim. If you're not eating halal, you're not mm -hmm. a Muslim. Mm -hmm. And that's not how Islam works. Islam is all about what's in your heart. And it's, it's not um, a club either. It's, it's not you're in, you're going to heaven. It, there's, there's lots of little things that, that, can, that, that, that can take you out. And there are lots of things that can, small things that you wouldn't even think about that can put you into heaven. It, it's not necessarily uh, a clear-cut case in, in that sense, which is something that I actually uh, liked about yeah, Islam. Yeah, yeah. Well, Kate, what do you think about this aspect? Well, it's re I mean, I think it's really worrying. I think it shows us that there's something deeply wrong um, with a lot of our Western culture, that, that, that women are actually looking at a religion as misogynistic and as deep set against women as Islam and thinking this might be a better choice. I mean, it really is the, 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 the devil in the deep blue sea to me. If, if there's something that seems appealing about Islam, and, and when you say that it gives you structure, well, that's great, but you can choose to have structure in your life. You can choose to follow whatever rules you like. You can choose to make rules about what you eat, what you drink, where you go out, all this kind of stuff. You can choose all those, and that's very different from suddenly deciding that because you want to choose all those things, you're going to convince immediately decide to believe in a, a, a mythical, crowd-dwelling deity, completely it's illogical, superstitious. It's not a convenient decision. This is logic. It's, it's pure fact and logic. Well, there's Once no you... logic to believing in a deity when, for which there is no empirical evidence. That's not logic. That has to come out of, out of a choice or out of a faith or out of... Oh, no. Most people, people believe in that. To, to be going out partying. I, I would. I'm 19 years old. I would much prefer to be out partying. I'd much prefer to be putting lots of makeup on and, and, and doing those things. But... Right, so I, I understand your point of view. No, I, can, I can sympathise with that. If you, if you would prefer to be doing that, but because of what you believe, you're going to follow the rules of what you believe. But um, what I understand your mother is saying is that she likes that structure and she wants that. And so, and so if you're coming at it from that point of view, that to me doesn't make sense. But the thing about that was I was getting to the point is that I didn't want... It's not something you choose. It's not something that I went, right, well, I'd really like to wear all black all the time. Well, we're Islam. That, that's the... Yeah, so, yeah, the goth, there exactly. are as well so many choices in our society, are there? And yet you've, in a sense, limited your choices. I mean, Christopher Hitchens, the writer, uh, said uh, basically that it's the ethics of, of 7th century Arabia. And he said it's a, uh, the, the Quran is, is derived from tedious local quarrels between unlearned villagers. What? And, and I suppose the question he and others of that ilk might ask is, why are you retreating from the modern world into the 7th There's century? There's nothing even approaching the truth. The Quran is the word of Allah, is God's actual words. And once you've ascertained that for yourself, mm. once you've verified it with history and observation of your own scientific reasoning and logic, once you've... Well, no, scientific reasoning and logic would tell you the exact opposite. Instead, you're accepting this ancient book, which says horrible things about women, no, about doesn't. gay people, have about you anyone who doesn't... Have, have, have you read the Quran? Have you read the Quran? It is absolutely loaded with hate. Uh, 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 you can use it. You know, you're so far, the vicious vicious You do know in, in the Quran it says that women and men are equal. If you've read... See, I've read the Quran, and I know what the Quran says about women. Have you read the Quran? Be able to make those points. Morning, morning, morning. 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 Morning
your life. Well, you were a Catholic before. I was, yeah. Lots of Catholic. Lots of Not always a Catholic. Lots of, there's lots of structure in uh, Catholicism too. But now I'd like to come back to two points. Firstly, I don't think in a liberal society there's any lessons to be given for a decision that's come to by consenting adults, be it polygamy, homosexual relationships or other. People are consenting adults. If that's what they want to do, frankly, I don't really see why any of us have anything to say about that. Firstly. Polygamy. Secondly, secondly, yeah, not, not, it doesn't have to be legally recognized. This, this is a consenting decision. But yeah, as an arrangement. I'd also like to come back to what you were saying about it being pie in the sky and that sort of stuff. The research by Kate Sabiri, who's done research into Muslim converts, suggested actually Muslim converts come to the decision after an extended period of re research, intellectual and cognitive research into the religion lasting several years. This is what the research says. A majority of them have investigated other religions and the conclusion of that research is that they decide to abide by that faith. Now, you can't then override women's statements for themselves, particularly not as a feminist, and I can't understand quite how you think that that's a fathomable position to hold, when women are saying for themselves that this is the process that they've been through, and this is the conclusion that they've come to. Well, allow me to come to Dave because I know you're desperately coming, I slightly cut you off at the end of the last debate. What do you think of these young white, uh, mainly female well, converts? Uh, can I just say that? I have read the Quran. I was born in a Muslim country. I work a lot in Muslim countries. Um, I feel that all the people of the book actually are in patriarchal religions. And I don't believe that women who say I feel liberated if I become a Muslim. After all, remember what Islam means, it's submission. When, as it was passed back against them, for example, a Muslim man can marry a non-Muslim woman. Um, Non-Muslim uh, 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 Muslim women cannot marry non-Muslim. Uh, excuse me. Anyway, um, there are all sorts of things that women in marriage in Islam cannot do, and men can do. And I know the quote that you say that they're equal. They are not equal. They're not equal in inheritance. They're not equal in marriage. Um, I, I think it's extraordinary that white women who have got the choices voluntarily give up choices. Why is it but happening? Then, what, 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 why is it happening? Well, there is actually, I mean, uh, women can choose to be masochists, and I'm afraid. Oh, why come, women? come, no. come. That's so patronizing. I mean, it's, it's, it's verging on the insulting here. That to think that I don't mind insulting. We are, sorry, can I just... Because I, just, I get insulted all the time by I'm Muslims. Not, I'm not looking to insult you. I just right. wanted to point out... I just wanted to point out, well, uh, that's a sad word, of course, but what did that he, said, he, he said Islam is not about white people. I mean, it, the report, the Swansea report, is of course showing that there are 60% of converts that are white, but there are of course many non-white converts to Islam, and that does need to be pointed out. I think the main issue I see here is that we get bogged down in these intricacies, which are still being very much debated within the Muslim community. This idea that there's a fundamental inequality be between men and women, I reject. I'm a Muslim woman, and I reject that there is fundamental equality, and I reject anything in the Quran that you would hold up to say that there isn't. Now, these are the d details. These are the details that are still being discussed. Let's hear from Susan first of all. I defer to you, Susan. Women rights, women rights before this country did. Women were allowed in Islam to own yes. their own yes. property, to have a job. Dame Anne Leslie, okay, okay, yes, Sorry, what did you say there? I said that was, I mean, Muhammad was very feminist for the 7th century. But we can't keep thinking about the solutions for the 7th century for the solutions for the 21st century. I don't want to blame women who are very confused about their place in society to go to a structure which is very clear about it. Which is, for example, if you are married, I don't know, it's okay if your husband takes another three wives? No, and as we discussed earlier with the marriage contract, that's something I can stipulate in my marriage contract. He's not allowed to do that. Mm. Yeah, so, no, I, I, I would like to come back to the fact that these are well, Let's hear from a man. Let's hear from you. You've studied about saying the talak. I have to divorce him too. Well, let's hear from a man. You've studied, Leon, over here now. You've studied this, the whole issue of converts. You're a Muslim yourself. How would anyone watching now who's not a Muslim, who may have only heard bad things, uh, how would I or anyone in the studio, how would our lives be enhanced by conversion to Islam? Well, I think that the, the report speaks for itself that's been released and the statistics show that thousands, tens of thousands of people in the UK are converting to Islam and finding it a better guide for life, as the question says. Why do we need a guide for life? 
Well, I think that's why we have this program, which is called the Big Questions, because in life there is big questions, and the fact is that people are fighting in fight Islam answers to these questions, and I want to really emphasise that. You know, there are a lot of questions, and sometimes there just aren't answers to those questions, and doubt. Well, most people believe that there are answers, and they believe that there is a God, and I think that these are the answers. Wait, wait, one second. I think it's important. I think it's important because it provides people with a certain a certainty. And the other side of that argument is that, well, actually, certainty is not necessarily a good thing. Doubt and asking questions are what have driven progress and have driven discovery yes, in, in our world. And not, Islam is not a, religion, uh, a, a rigid religion, and it has different interpretations, yeah. and there are different approaches to Islam, and different ways of understanding Islam. But I just want to emphasize one point, which is that these ladies who are educated, intelligent ladies in the audience, who replicate many other women who are out there, and men, men and women, who are converting to Islam are investigating the religion after extensive study, as has already been mentioned, and often there's a reluctance to convert to Islam. So the fact that people convert to Islam, even after so much study and reluctance, I think it really shows that people are finding it a, v a very credible alternative to answer these questions. You went the other way. You were a Muslim, and now you're, you've converted to Judaism. That's a, a, a small step from man and a, and a giant leap. Messianic Judaism. My right. right. Believing in the Messiah, what? Yeshua, Jesus of Nazareth. Messianic Judaism. What was Messianic Judaism? Yes. Okay. What, what? So you believe in Jesus? Uh, yeah. Absolutely, I believe in him as a personal saviour, right. and I believe in the eternal mighty God. Right. What he was the is, problem with Islam for you? Well, I, I want to focus in first on the idea that Islam is the only religion on this earth. Mm -hmm. What we have to understand is, is the moral fibre of this society has broken down so much that last week, for instance, on one of your shows, you had this pastor who said he was a pastor for X number of years, yet he didn't believe in God. So when you have these kind of pastors and pastors who sit in audiences and say, well, you know, we can debate certain things out of the Bible and disagree with them, then you're going to find young ladies, British ladies, are confused and they're going to go to Islam because that's the most leaving, obvious choice. Leaving the faith is very much disapproved of, isn't it? Yes, that's right. But the thing is, in my case, my case, I came over to the truth. I went beyond Islam. Didn't stop at the seventh century. I went to the time of Moses. I went to the time of Abraham, to the time of Yahushua, Jesus, the Messiah. And I found truth there. That's where I knew the truth is. Yeah, yeah, just one minute, one minute, one minute, second. Yeah, general, you've, you've got a book there. Is, yeah. is there a quote in the book? Or are you just... I'll be quoting from it. Right, right, go on. Um, the, well, faith, yeah? the, the Hadith has lots of rather nasty um, edicts in it. It is apparently the sayings and edicts of the Prophet Muhammad. And, for example, paradise is in the shadow of swords. And the penalty of death for apostasy also comes from the hadith. It isn't in the Quran. Actually, that, that actually, never said we have to put this into the, into the, into the, into the... Wait a minute, no, no. We have to put this, they argue, into the context of the 7th century and those uh, aforementioned tribal squabbles. What, what, what troubles you about Islam, if anything, Jonathan? Well, I mean, I, I think I've been very careful to car not to caricature Islam. Thank you. Know, you. Knowing within Christianity how many different viewpoints there are, I'm sure the same exists within Islam, and it's all about the interpretation of the scriptures. Christianity has changed its view on, you know, sl keeping of slaves, place of women, uh, the Sabbath, even on war, um, you know, many, many times. Um, but what I am, I think, attracted to Christianity about is, is, is its forgiveness, uh, and its love of enemies, not just, you know, I'll forgive you if you repent. Love those who persecute But love those who persecute Bless those who persecute Can I, can I and, and Maybe that is within Islam, but I haven't seen, no, my, my religion is one of, of Jesus on the cross who while the nails were being banged into God and his hands and his feet and being put to death, he said, I forgive. Well, there's a and very, that, that is powerful. There's a very uh, well-known saying of the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, said, forgive him who wrongs you, do, him, do good to him who does uh, injustice against you and forgive those that wrong you. So it's so all... Long 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 no, 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 that's, that's not... Sorry. You're thinking something else. This is a question sorry, from the, the Prophet Muhammad. School of Islam. No, no, it doesn't. This is a, a saying of the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. But I think... Why do you always have to say peace be upon him every time you mention his name? Does, does he require that? You don't have to, but it's, really, I, I, it's a really nice marker of respect for prophets in general, and I would say the same for Prophet Jesus. <laughs> peace be upon him. That, you know, these are people that have extremely high esteem in, in our regard. But, um, but I think it's important to point out, we were talking about the reasons why people uh, convert to religion. This is not a, a, a loony decision that people are making. You have to look that uh, for a lot of people, they've investigated different faiths, they've done a lot of research, and they've come to look into the truth claims of various relig religions and come okay. to this conclusion. We have to leave it there. Thank you so much for all your contributions. Thank you for coming in, and thank you for being such a good audience today. Um,